Hi, this video will show you some key formatting requirements necessary for the presentation of your assessments, including using correct page margins, font size and style, line spacing, indenting paragraphs, creating document headers, formatting headings, using the SLS website to reference accurately, and adding an appendix when required. You may want to watch the video straight through or use the pause button to stop and do practice. Although some of these are not an essential part of your marking criteria, they are all good practice and ensure that your assessments are presented well. Let's see how to format a new blank Microsoft Word document using the APA presentation guidelines. Depending on your computer, the best way to open a new Word document is to go to the Start button on the bottom left hand side of your screen and open a new Microsoft Word document. Usually the margins are set correctly when you open a new document and you don't need to change them. If you want to double check, click on the Page Layout tab and then click on Margins. Normal should be selected here. Now we want to set the font type and size. Go to the Home tab. From the Font Selection drop down box here, choose Times New Roman. You can type in the name Times New Roman to find it or you can scroll down the list. Next to the Font Selection box is the Font Size. Choose Size 12. OK, on to Line Spacing. Still on the Home tab, click on this button here with lines and arrows. This is for line spacing. Choose 2 for double spacing. If at the bottom of the list it says Remove Space After Paragraph, click on that to remove the extra space that Microsoft Word often puts after paragraphs. In accordance with APA formatting, we need to have an indent first line for each paragraph. A good way to do this is with the Margin Ruler. To see the ruler, click on the View tab and click on Ruler to get a tick. Then you will be able to see the margin rulers here. To set the first line indent, hover your mouse over the top triangle here until you see the words first line indent. Then click and hold the mouse button as you drag the triangle to one and a quarter. Just the top triangle should have moved, not the lower triangle or square. OK, let's put some text in our document and check the formatting is OK. If you've copied the text from elsewhere, click on your new document and choose the Paste option here with a capital A. This option is Keep Text Only. It will remove any formatting from the original document and your pasted text should conform to the formatting of this new document. OK, a quick check. First line of the paragraph is indented, margins are 2.5 and lines are double spaced. Times New Roman font in size 12? Good so far. Now we'll put in a header. To open the header space, double click on the area at the top of the page. You can see we're in a special area separate from the main page. The things you put in here will stay constant on each page of your document. First, put the page number. When you're in the header, you can see this header and footer tools menu. Click on page number, then top of page, then option 3, which places the number on the right hand side. Good. Now put your mouse cursor on the left side of the page number and type in your full name. Press the tab key once. Then type in the unit name. Press the tab key once. There, that's the header done. Double click on the main page area to exit from the header. If you need to edit the header, just double click on it again to get in. Great, now I've used Times New Roman font size 12, double spacing, first line in depth for paragraphs and created a header. That's the essential formatting for APA style. Some assessments require headings throughout. When using headings, format them using title case. That is, all important words start with a capital letter, but not the small words like A or OR. Centre your headings on the page using bold font but not underlined. You will need to reference your research in some of your assignments. To ensure that you adhere to the APA referencing standards, use the Student Learning Support website. Go to the Referencing and Research tab. Under How to Reference di Different Types of Sources, you will find instructions for all different source types such as books, journal articles, websites, etc. The formatting changes depending on how many authors, so make sure you click on the tab. Each one will show you how to reference it in text as a quote or paraphrased, as well as how to include it in your reference list. Some assessments require you to provide the evidence that supports your findings in an appendix. This could include charts, questionnaires or transcripts of participants' responses. 
Each appendix should be presented on a separate page with the title Appendix in title case, bold font, centred and not underlined. Letters should be used to differentiate where, where more than one appendix is used. For example, Appendix A, Continuous Professional Development Chart. If there is only one appendix, there's no need for a letter. Get in touch with us at Student Learning Support if you have any queries or need specific advice about an assignment you're writing. Good luck with all your studies.